Hi, I'm Coleman Jackson. I'm a shareholder of Coleman Jackson Professional Corporation. Coleman Jackson Professional Corporation is a law firm headquartered in Dallas, Texas, United States of America. I earned my Juris Doctorate degree from the Dedman School of Law. I earned my Master of Accountancy degree from the University of Georgia. I am licensed to practice law in Texas and Michigan. My principal areas of practice for over 30 years are taxation, wills, trust, estate planning, business structuring, litigation, and immigration, legal matters. It is indeed a great opportunity and privilege for me to speak to the Brazilian medical professionals. Today, I will be talking about opportunities for foreign physicians and other healthcare workers to work and live and raise their families in the United States. COVID-19 revealed a lot of shortcomings in the healthcare system in the United States. An overwhelming majority of negative health outcomes were experienced in the minority, low income, and other depressed communities throughout the country. The global pandemic revealed cogently the lack of adequate access to quality health care in the United States. Many people died of COVID-19 in these communities. Public health policies need to change to ensure that a sufficient supply of quality health care workers is available to serve all of America, regardless of what the people may look like, how much money they may have in their pocket or bank accounts. Quality health care involves much more than universal health insurance and access to understaffed hospitals and clinics. They must be qualified, compassionate, skilled health care providers who are willing and able to serve communities throughout America, staffing her hospitals and clinics and medical offices. Legislation enacted by the United States Congress on November the 12th, 1999, 2020, Public Law Number 106-95-113, Statute 1312, Section 5, supposed to have made it easier for certain foreign physicians and other healthcare workers seeking to work and reside in the United States to enter the United States in the second employment-based preference category known as the EB-2 visa under the National Interest Waiver. The EB-2 NIW visa is not the only visa that healthcare workers may use to work in the United States. There are a number of visas that can serve that purpose, such as the H-1B, J-1, EB-1, and the traditional EB-2 visa. All of these visa categories afford foreign healthcare workers with the opportunity to live and work in the, in the healthcare field in the United States. So what is unique about the EB-2 National Interest Visa Waiver? The EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa was designed to make it easier and shorten the time period for foreign healthcare workers to come to the United States to live, work, and raise their family indefinite in the healthcare industry. In time, the EB-2 National Interest Visa wa Waiver Holder can lead to a green card or permanent residence, residency in the United States. All kinds of doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers with advanced degrees could qualify, so long as they agree to work full-time in a field designated by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, as a health professional shortage area or in a Veterans Administration Hospital. And a federal agency or a State Department of Public Health has determined that the healthcare worker services is in the public interest. These are the two prongs created in the 1999 legislation establishing the EB-2 National Interest Waiver. Foreign healthcare workers must satisfy these two prongs of the law by obtaining a certification from a federal or state agency, such as the Veterans Hospital, VA, on the federal level, or state public health agency certification at the state level. Local health agency certification is insufficient and also private organization attestation of the public interest, likewise, is insufficient to satisfy the National Interest Waiver certification requirement. A certification by the State Department of Public Health tends to be persuasive evidence of public interest. 
and SUDS find a national interest waiver certification requirement of the 1999 law. Let me point out that an NIW is generally considered an easier path to the second preference employment-based EB2 visa. NIW healthcare workers must satisfy all of the requirements for the traditional EB2 visa in addition to the NIW requirements. One, advanced degree or equivalent foreign degree with five years of experience or option or exceptional ability. Two, doctor's license in the United States of America. The healthcare worker must be licensed in the state where they intend to practice. Three, proficiency in oral and written English. This is an incredible, attractive option for many professionals who are considering immigrating to the United States. EB2 National Interest Waiver Visa allows the foreign medical professional to self-petition, which means that you do not need a job or job offer from an American employer to qualify. The traditional EB2 visa requires an American employer to sponsor. The EB2 NIW does not. Moreover, since the EB-2 NIW visa category does not require an employer sponsor the visa, you do not need to go through the certification process with the U.S. Department of Labor. Certification process of inability to find U.S. workers to qualify. Another big advantage to the EB-2 NIW is that you can obtain permanent resident status in the United States, that is, get a green card, the EB-2 NIW visa is available to highly qualified foreigners or those with graduate degrees. The individual healthcare professional is required to obtain certification that their services will serve the national interests of the United States. And let's look at some of the cons. The EB-2 NIW is not for the faint-hearted. The main reason USCIS may grant the national EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa is because the foreign physician agrees to work for five years in a designated underserved area. These designated areas may be located in rural America, blighted ur urban areas, economically depressed areas, and other areas where American medical professionals choose not to practice. The foreign medical worker must be licensed as a doctor in the United States of America as a doctor in their specialty or in their chosen area of medical service. Medical licensure requires you to take all official exams that conclude with residency here. Benefit number one, employer sponsorship is not mandatory. You can complete an EB-2 NIW visa application form without sponsorship from an American employer. You can then work for an employer or be self-employed in your own medical practice. This self-petitioning process is unlike the H-1B visa and the EB-2 visa. With these visas, a job offer and employer sponsor is required. The extensive labor certification process is mandatory with the H-1B and the EB-2 visa categories. The employer sponsor must demonstrate and prove that there are no American workers available to fill the position based on well-documented recruitment effort. Benefit number two, a specific job offer is not required. You can complete a NIW green card form even if you do not have a job offer from a U.S. employer. Having a job offer is a plus for approval. In addition, having a job offer in the USA can benefit your EB-2 NIW process, particularly to demonstrate that you are already well positioned to continue the proposed venture job. In this part of the test, not only is your educational and professional background considered, but also any progress you have made in relation to your proposed venture. Having an employer's interest in the US can help show that progress has been made. Remember, you must work in this designated underserved area for five years. 
your green card application will be held in suspense until you can prove that you have actually worked for five years in a certified underserved medical area. It would likely be easier to produce evidence to the USCIS to prove that you have met this service requirement if you work for an employer rather than yourself in your own medical practice. Benefit number three, work certification is not required. Unlike most other job-based green card categories, you do not need to go through the PERM labor certification process to show the lack of U.S. workers in the labor market for your occupation to be eligible to register a NIW application. Benefit number four, direct access to the green card for you and your whole family, your spouse and children under 21, will also be able to complete an I-485 status adjustment request once your EB-2 priority date is current as part of your NIW green card application process. That will allow them to receive their own green cards. Your family's legal status is completely dependent upon you maintaining your EB2 NIW status. Remember, you must serve in the medical underserved area for five years before you can get a green card. Your spouse and children's immigration status is depending on you maintaining your immigration status. You must pay filing fees as I am showing in the chart now. Note that all government filing fees are current as of February 28, 2023. They can change with little notice. There is a consulate processing fee and immigrant fee when applying from abroad. Other costs such as translations, mailing and delivery documents, and passport photographs also can be expected. Premium process is available for the EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa. This could speed up the USCIS processing time considerably for your application. Premium processing currently costs $2,500, and the processing time can be cut to about 45 days. Attorney fees can range from $9,700 to over $23,500 depending upon the complexity of the medical professional situation and the number of family members accompanying the physician or healthcare worker. Note that clients who are referred to Coleman Jackson PC by NN Abogados Associados are entitled to a 25% discount on attorney fees. We also charge $100 for the initial consultation. You can generally expect the USCIS to adjudicate and decide EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa applications from about 15 to 18 months. Processing times can be longer if you are issued a request for evidence, RFE. As I said earlier, in the event you pay for premium processing, processing times could be about 45 calendar days for the EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa. This concludes my presentation. I hope this presentation adequately explains the opportunities that exist in the United States for foreign physicians and other foreign healthcare professionals as it pertains to working here, living here, and raising a family here with an EB-2 National Interest Waiver Visa. If you have any specific questions you can call me at 214-599-0431 or send me an email at cj at cjacksonlaw.com and schedule an initial consultation with our law firm. Everyone take care.